Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Set Infinite Forbidden Okay, so let's talk about his historic set. Yes, you might be wondering why is this set historic? Well, it is historic. Its release date is July 18th, 2024, which could be just, let's say, hmm, next week. Introduces Fiendsmith, White Forest, and Mimi Ghoul. First of all, the reason why I'm calling this deck historic because it'll introduce Malcharmy into the game. Malcharmy is going to be a card that's going to change Yu-Gi-Oh! in TCG anyways for a long time to come. And it's going to be historic in how we're going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! going forward. Hence why it's not, it's a historic set. With that being said, let's uh, move on to the next part of the video. Support update, Sinful Spoils, Tempai Dragon, Voiceless Voice, Memento. We'll have our legacy support, which will be Gimmick Puppet, Madolce, Drytron, and Exodia. That's pretty much it. Let's move on. Okay, so let's talk about the value card in this set, which will be Fiendsmith Engraver. Indeed, with Fiendsmith Engraver, this is going to be the monster that searches your rota. So hence why it's going to be quite expensive in the value card of the set. Maybe some could be argued that the Fiendsmith uh, rota or searcher, that's going to be the most expensive card. But I feel it's going to be this engraver because it engraves upon yourself. Laugh at my joke, I'm funny. And your wallet as well. And then we'll go to the wild cards. Vespa Girsu, Malchami Porelia, and Dominus Purge. With now that being said, let's look at these wild cards, especially Malchami Porelia. We'll discuss about it, a bit about it in this video, but then next week I will be talking about the Malchami series, breaking them down, with the new Malchami that's come out and talking about the potential influences, potential drawbacks, whatever that they have compared to Maxi. Let's move on and showcase the first wildcard. Vespa Girsu is a quick play spell with the following effect. If your opponent controls at least two uh, or more monsters than you do, your opponent can send any number of monsters they control to the graveyard. Also, you, you apply this effect based on the number of monsters your opponent controls. Zero, halve your life points. One, your opponent gains 2,000 life points. Two, banish your opponent's entire hand face up until the end phase. Three, plus your opponent cannot activate monster effects this turn. You can only activate one Vespa Girsu this turn. So, we can see here there's a lot of potential for this card. It is a board breaker, and it's our first board breaker we've gotten in Yu-Gi-Oh! that doesn't have some strict, you know, regulation here that we can't do something. For example, we have Evenly Matched, which it can clear the board, but you will skip your battle phase. You have Lightning Storm. You can either choose to destroy face up or the back row, but the drawback is you have to control no face up cards. You have Dark Lord Amor, which cannot be stopped by your opponent and can negate all monster effects on the field, but you're seeing they're always having a bot here. You cannot deal any damage. Notice how, like, all our current board breakers always have some kind of minus here. They have some kind of thing. It means you cannot kill your opponent that turn. You can't do anything that turn. And there's nothing you can, you can do there. Even Pot of Prosperity, which uh, is a consistency searcher, can add you the game-winning card. But the damage is halved when you've activated to your opponent. So bear this in mind. Whereas with Vespa Girsu here, we can see that it can be activated during any time, any phase, since it's a quick play. Extremely versatile, extremely great. And it's a common, so it's going to be cheap to get. 
And I, me personally, I see a lot of potential in this card. I definitely, and I'm getting myself loads of playsets of this card. I'm going to be testing it out in the side deck. But essentially, that's it. Let's move on to our next wild card. We have Balchami Perelia. So again, we see Malchani Peremlia. I think I talked about this in the common scenarios video. And I think it got corrected by a subscriber, uh, TexFrog. Anyways, thank you, TexFrog. But we read this effect again. I'm not really gonna read it again, but summarize it. You can see it there. And we can see that that's how it is. We, I think we all know what this card does. So let's move on to the next card. We have Dominus Purge. We can see there it can be activated from the hand. Sure, for the rest of the duel, you can't activate uh, monsters with dark water or fire, but there's a lot of potential here. And that's about it. So we have the Yugi Award candidates. We have the best wild card looking for 2024. Looks like Metal Tronus. Indeed, this is the first uh, best wild card because it's been used immediately after release. It's been absolutely great, and we're seeing it in all manners of topping lists. And that's why I'm going to say it's going to be the best um, wild card of, 20, of 2024. Maybe we'll have some other wild cards that will be used more, but I'm, I bet this card is going to be used a ton in the future. It's really versatile. It's really good. It's great for the tier zero matchups we're having right now. If everyone is playing the same deck, no one will be. So again, great card, and I definitely see a lot in its future. Even just for the fact that um, it's always going to be live, because our extra deck is going to pretty be much the same, even if we get rid of the generic negators in the game. The problematic solving cards like SP Little Knight, uh, you know, and Typhon, always going to be in people's extra decks. So at the bare minimum, you're always going to break even in in your deck when you have this card. Bear that in mind. We have the best new engine, Fiendsmith. Now, this is going to be very interesting uh, because we have Snake Eyes that came out uh, last year. But I still do feel Fiendsmith is going to take home the bacon, take it home and be the best new engine of 2024 will be Fiend Smith. I expect this to be in everything, see it everywhere, and definitely when we have the awards on my channel at the end, near the end of the year, we're definitely going to see Fiend Smith take home the bacon as it'll have those accolades, awards, and all manners of things. All right, let's go to the grading. So, it's grading time. How do we grade this set? An S plus yes this set is absolutely exceptional that's an amazing great right it is beyond great it is exceptional there's fantastic cards in this set there's something for everybody we have a board breakers that are easy to access for everyone we have those meta staples in new archetype that ingests new life into the game are you serious uh new life is in air quotes there because it can depend what you mean by new life Facts. into the game. There's loads of things in Infinite Forbidden that is for everybody. You don't, if you don't want the expensive cards, you don't need to. This buffs decks such as Ragnarika, which are a bit pricey. I think the search is a bit pricey. But in overall, there's loads to talk about in this set. There's loads of good things in this set. There's introduction to Maltami Porelia. I'm guessing the future is going to go down in price because Maltami Fioros, which comes out in Rage of Abyss, is going to be more as it has a stronger effect. But anyways, that's all, that's all we've got to talk about here. So with a grading of S, S+, plus, which is exceptional, Loads of great things about this set, and it's going to be a historic set for the foreseeable future. Because it introduces Maltrami into the TCG and the game at large. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. 